City of Forest Park City Council meeting. Today is March 7th. Uh, time is now 7.30. Let us start and stand with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So this is a uh, council public hearing. Um, we have one item on the agenda to discuss. Uh, we are specifically discussing a, a rezoning of approximately 14.93 acres of land um, at the southeast corner of West Sharon Road and Waycross Road from R2, uh, one family residence to RPUD, uh, residential planned unit development. Um, and we are discussing and adopting a development plan for that PUD. Uh, we would particularly stick to the rezoning. Nothing else will be discussed at this time. And uh, we actually have the developer here. Mr. Christo will give a presentation. And after that presentation is concluded, uh, if you would please kindly stand, go to the mic, give your name, your address, and you will have five mon minutes to um, ask uh, to give your comments or to ask the developer questions. Um, so if we can just have Mr. Christo, please uh, approach the podium and state your name, who you are, and what you do. Hello, my name is Joe Christo. I'm a uh, developer and home builder with Christo Homes. I work with my brother, Adam Christo, who will be here shortly coming from another meeting. And I'm here today to present a community that we are planning for your community. It is a community that is mixed with two types of housing. One being a townhome product, which is three stories. These will have three bedrooms, two bathrooms, optional finished areas in the lower level, and generally will be attracted to families uh, with or without children. There's a lot of steps in these units. And they will face Waycross and Sharon Road, uh, attractive units uh, with variegated colors. Uh, and these, this project will be managed by an HOA. In the community, there's a second uh, home design product, which we call a paired ranch. This product is essentially two living units under one roof, approximately 1,200, 1,250 square feet, two bedrooms, two bathrooms. These are one level home designs geared toward a different demographic. Those who are either on the very uh, starting of their family, no kids, or those who are empty nesters who do not have children, perhaps looking to uh, um, uh, retire, or those who are just professionals who do not need as much space. Uh, the finishes will be nice. We'll be offering optional flooring, optional granite tops, cathedral ceilings, and a lot of the nice uh, and new finishes that are offered today with all the energy efficiencies. With the proposed uh, drawing, as you see, the darker brown are the townhome uh, units. Uh, they will be up against the busier streets uh, but with the area behind them, which is open space, if they do have children, they'd want to play, that would be their open space uh, area. The uh, tan units around the perimeter, those would be the paired ranch units, the one level units. So it would be an interesting look for a community having two product types serving two demographics, two markets in the same community all the drainage for this community, the rainwater, all the runoff would be serviced within the detention pond shown in blue behind there. Um, there were some concerns about what would be done with the drainage. There's been existing drainage on this land. Well, sure, it's not being managed. It's an open field. It has not been developed. Once it is developed, the engineers must ensure that the water is managed properly for the site and that's what that area is in the back. Um, I don't know if there's any elevations that are shown on, on other slides or that might be done later. Um, 
but th that is what we are presenting here. The number of units in this uh, uh, community is 99 units. That is adding up all of the paired villas along with the, uh, the darker brown townhomes as you, th you see there. Um, the townhomes again made sense with the topography, the lay of the land. The land is high near Sharon Waycross Road, dips down to a plateau, then dips down again. So the, really these two product types worked well with the engineers as we presented them here. Uh, that's, that's what we are proposing tonight. Um, uh, we believe that the price point on uh, the townhomes uh, could start in the 340s and the 350s. Of course, we would like the pricing to be more reasonable, but as a home builder right now, construction costs are higher and going higher. Um, lumber costs have gone up 3% over the last couple years since uh, 2020, the pandemic started. A lot of us thought maybe pricing will come down. They're not. They plateau and they raise even higher. Um, we imagine that the paired home units uh, could start somewhere under 300,000, but um, when we get more detail, we can uh, firm up those numbers. Uh, again, this community is managed by an HOA. So everyone who comes in this community, not by choice, is mandated. They are part of this homeowners association, must pay dues into the association, and the, uh, the association will ensure that the product is kept up to the standards set in the HOA. Uh, it will maintain the exterior of the units, uh, the roof, the exterior, the paint, and we are considering also looking into lawn maintenance and some snow removal for the paired villas. Uh, this maintains a long-term look and vibrance of it, so people know when they move into a community that is managed by an HOA, that'll be looking good this year, next year, and the following years. That is the advantage. Yes, the disadvantage of this rules, you get the letters and you get the fines, but everything is set up to protect the investment of everyone's home. That's my presentation. All right, thank you, Mr. Christo. Um, next, we will be hearing um, briefly from our city's planning director, Mr. Chris Anderson. He's going to go over the particulars about uh, what exactly is a planned unit development, um, the because we are discussing that zoning change, and he will also be, dis be discussing what's currently zoned there. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Chris Anderson, Community Development Director for the city. Um, so briefly, with the zoning, um, this property is currently zoned R2, and that is the um, one of two single-family detached districts that we have in the city. There's an R1 and an R2. Um, <clears throat> and the uh, C and B sections are similarly zoned. Um, the areas uh, where the apartments are, uh, Versailles apartments uh, to the east and, and Forest Park apartments to the north, those are zoned PR3. That's our multifamily district. The plan unit development district is um, something like some somewhat in between those two um, and it's it's a district that was um, put into the zoning code to encourage uh, creativity in development um, and also a way for the city to nail down um, some details uh, about the development uh, basically in the r2 and r1 districts you have a certain lot size that's the minimum lot size can't be in R2, it's an 80 foot lot across the front and 12,000 square feet, which is about a quarter of an acre um, in size. You can't go smaller than that. Um, you could go larger. Uh, <clears throat> with the plan unit development, we look at the, um, the density of development um, at overall for, um, for the district. So in, by zoning this RPUD7, it's a maximum of seven uh, dwelling units per acre. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned in the R2, uh, that maximum density uh, is about four units per acre. So it is, uh, it does allow um, for some more units. It also allows for a mix of, um, of housing types, uh, provided that they are, are single family housing types. So, um, <clears throat> 
an apartment community or an apartment building that was um, intended for renting and was managed by, let's say, an apartment manager would not be something that would be uh, permitted in the RPUD7 district. Um, <clears throat> the reason that, um, well, to back up a little bit, the, the city acquired this property in, in two different pieces. Uh, there was the former swim club, which was a, a acquired in the in the 1990s and, and the city operated the pool for a time um, before closing it and it was late, later known as the activity center that's the northern five acres of the property the southern 10 acres are the former Cameron Park elementary uh, property which was um, closed uh, by the Wynwood school district um, and subsequently uh, the building demolished and then the city used a, um, a neighborhood stabilization grant um, to purchase the property. Um, so the city held the property for about um, uh, almost 10 years. And um, we put it on the market in 2020. We listed it with a, a, a commercial broker. Um, and for a period of time, um, we explored uh, putting the new uh, library that's going to be built in Forest Park um, on this property. Uh, but uh, the library ultimately concluded that um, they would, the topography would be too much of a challenge um, for, the, for their development. And, and we um, found them a different site on Northland Boulevard next to the post office. And, and I think that one's going to work out better all, for all concerned. Um, so in putting the, city, the property on the market, we were also... Um, trying to uh, fulfill some of the recommendations of our um, 2007 redevelopment plan. And um, one of the major recommendations was to take this combined property um, and develop a, a, a housing product that the city did not really have. Um, and that is um, an attached for sale uh, single family product. So that's either the townhomes or the, uh, the paired ranches uh, both fit that category. Um, <clears throat> when we first started talking to uh, Crystal Holmes about developing this, um, we had, uh, we went through several iterations of the plan and um, had some detached single family in there. But really, um, <clears throat> the more we looked at it, um, first of all, the, the Townhomes along Waycross and Sharon uh, were very um, pleased with that idea. It was something that we had had um, back when we did some, some visioning sessions in 2011 uh, to take advantage of that fall in the ground, um, have the garages in the back at, at the ground level, being the lower level, and then have two stories um, at street level. So what you get is, a, is a, an attractive front that, that has no garage door visible, just the front door. Um, gives you a, a, a nicer appearance, in my opinion, than, than uh, seeing the garage doors. So um, I bring this up because we had um, done a fair amount of, of, of planning and um, studying and, and projecting for this property. And the, the development plan that um, that has been developed and, and presented is a result of that. Um, some of these ideas for the layout of the property actually came from um, us on the city staff. Uh, <clears throat> and this is an opportunity for the city to diversify its housing stock, to retain uh, some residents who are in homes that they might want to downsize or, or move into a more modern uh, type of floor plan with a nice master suite um, and that kind of thing. Um, we think the paired villas or the, the paired ranches um, would fit that, fit the bill for a lot of those folks. Um, another, um, and this is based on housing studies that we've done, another demographic group that the city um, has living here right now, um, but uh, tends to lose over time are, um, are some young professionals uh, who start out in 
renting in, in one of our apartment communities um, in Northwest, in Kensington, Remington, one of those, um, when it comes time to buy uh, for the first time, uh, they might look for a townhome. Uh, it, it, try buying a townhome in Forest Park, it's really difficult. Um, and to have more of that, um, the recommendation from our housing consultant would help our housing market overall um, in terms of comparable sales, in terms of um, home appreciation over time. That the recommendation from that study was that we had too much of a one-dimensional housing market, or housing stock, um, and it was uh, placing a little bit of an upper limit on, on where prices could go and, and the competitiveness of that of that product. So um, it, the ability to move into a, a, a better fit of housing uh, for really uh, some of our, of our most uh, you know, treasured and capable citizens uh, was something that was attractive to us, as well as the ability to attain uh, or retain um, young professionals who are here as renters already. Um, <clears throat> And um, I hope that explains everything with the zoning. The, really, the RPUD7 is not that different from the single-family detached zoning, R, R2. The main, the main thing is the overall density calculation, uh, number one, and the ability to, um, to vary the housing types. And then the third is that we are going to um, have some things that um, will be approved by our planning commission um, and then required of the developers, such as the exterior materials, um, <clears throat> the uh, details on the um, the open space, um, and uh, well, there's a whole list of them, but I won't go over them all. Um, but that is, if this uh, goes forward, would be the next step in, in the process of approval. Um, they would come back to us with a, a final development plan, which would have a, a, a finer degree of detail. Um, but overall, um, the Planning Commission reviewed this um, at a pretty long meeting um, and voted six to zero to recommend that the City Council uh, uh, pass the, the rezoning. Um, <clears throat> they found that the, the development was unified in design um, and that it uh, met the goals of the redevelopment plan. and. Um, it also fit in the area as a transition between the, uh, the higher density apartments and the somewhat lower density existing single family neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Um, at this time, if any resident has any questions for Mr. Anderson or Mr. Christo, uh, please uh, come to the podium. Like I said, state your name, your address, um, and we are discussing specifically the zone change from R2 um, uh, one family residence to a residential plan unit development. You can just come up to the podium. My name is Peggy Rouse. I live at 633 Cascade. My question is, how will you handle the traffic that's going to increase in that section? Has anybody considered that? Yeah, if I have a microphone here. Okay. Uh, uh, well, yes. Um, the the traffic um, uh, exiting from the development um, would there are two ways to get in and out of there on Sharon Road um, as well as Waycross. Um, <clears throat> the increase in the number of trips. Um, is not so substantial that either road, either one of those roads or the intersection between the two um, couldn't handle. They're both operating at a, a level of service of A or B, which is considered very good for, in terms of traffic engineering. And that would not change with the addition of 99 dwelling units. So for example, there are over 600 dwelling units in, in the C section. The B section has a about 250 or so, 
Um, and so in comparison with those numbers, you also have the apartments. Um, we already have a lot of dwelling units in the area, and the roads are operating, and the intersections and the traffic signals are, are operating at, at acceptable levels or better right now. So this, this addition, in terms of percentage-wise, is, is not very great. I somewhat question that because at Cascade and Carlsbad and Carlsbad and Waycross, because most of the homes are just single garages, single driveways, there are so many cars parked there, especially on Carlsbad. When you're turning off a Cascade on the Carlsbad, that gets really crowded. People don't yield. And I'm concerned if you've got people, I don't know where the street will be coming out of the new development. Will it be right there at the Cameron Park driveway, probably? Or do you uh, know? Not, not, quite not quite that line. It would line up with Carlsbad. Oh. Well, just really quick. Um, this public hearing has a specific focus. We're discussing specifically um, how you feel about the zoning change. Uh, we can, well, there will be another portion when we start our council meeting for public comment where you can ask any other um, about any other particular details for this development but um, as it relates to changing from zoning from R2 to the PUD um, if you can give your input on that and as well as any other uh, resident as we discuss the public hearing but that's affecting the traffic so to right. me that affects it yeah I understand the change in the zoning mm -hmm. thank you thank you does anyone else have any other questions for mr. Christo or mr. Anderson Teresa Rodriguez, 780 Evangeline Road. Um, I want to know why our community, which is the second largest city in the county, does not have a community or rec center. That's badly needed, and this property would be one of the best locations to do that. I know it was tried for 20 years ago, Population has changed. Demographics have changed. Why can't this property be made available for a community center instead of another housing development? Well, thank you for your question. But um, if you could just hold that until the public, uh, the um, comments from the public section of our our council meeting, because like I said, this public hearing is specifically on how residents feel as it relates to the zoning change if you're in favor of it or uh, if you're in favor of it or, or against it does anyone have any other questions as it relates to the zoning change mr. Weirs, you can go up my name is Brandon Weirs. I live at 11261 Hanover Road, and I'm very pleased to hear the zoning proposal to go to PUD. Uh, it was something debated many years ago and not realized at a time when there was density objections. But this, at the density level of seven, seems to be manageable in a way that previous proposals were not. But as I look at the diagram now, more specifically, the question before me is, where are the homes facing out and on Sharon, and where is the Versailles Apartments in relation to the diagram shown? The, Vers the Versailles Apartments are <clears throat> right here in this grade. They're a little bit grayed out. This is Sharon Road across the top. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm pointing with a little hand there. Yeah, you point with the mouse. If you can see there, right in that upper right corner. These are the apartments. This is Sharon Road, and these are the townhomes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The well, the street. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Any other residents have any questions uh, for Mr. Christo or Mr. Anderson as it relates to the, um, this particular zoning change? 
Mr. Mayor, could yes. they please sign their name, the oh. spelling of their names? Yes, if you can do the sign in, she sign your name um, and then state your name and address. My name is Carlos Gray, and I live at 638 Brunner. And the question that I have for Mr. Crystal specifically, because on Brunner, it appears to me that the retention pond would be backed up right to our property. Uh, is there, how do you manage, how are you going to manage the retention pond? Because it's back, that, that part, I can't, now I can see it but that's backed up right to our fence, that area right there. Um, how is uh, that? Yes, we can hear you. Can, can you hear me? Okay. Want me to ask questions on how we're going to manage the storm basin on the development? Right, because it's just, uh, <laughs> it's just are you gonna fish out of it? Or are you gonna, or what are you gonna do with that? Because it just appears to be, uh, it can be, and I've seen it in other communities where it becomes just an open water basin. Well, the good news is that uh, the storm basin will be uh, designed by engineers. Uh, we have a woman that we work uh, with in, um, in Liberty Township, and a lot of times we get lost in the conversation because she's very detailed about the specifics of the water flow, the percolation of the soil, the rain amounts, and I just say to my engineer, you, you designed it right. She said, yes, and it's going to work properly. She says, yes, and that's what the engineers do. They put all the detail based upon the storm water, certain rain events, how long the water will be held in that basin, based upon the soil, how much the soil percolates water, uh, it's designed to manage properly the water that falls onto the boundaries within the red line and holds it for the designated amount of time so that it doesn't negatively affect properties outside of its boundaries. Uh, so that is what I can tell you we have the engineers work on. That's why the engineers are designing it. They understand these details. And uh, I, at this point, I don't know, is that a water holding? Basin is a dry basin. I, it could be either, but generally uh, they're dry basins. Um, and then it will be fully managed and upkept by the HOA. So it we'll always will have a management body taking care of maintaining and mowing it, keeping its upkeep. Yeah, so the, the, the basin, whether it's dry or wet, meaning holding water or the type of basin that will hold water temporarily until it absorbs into the earth. All of the area in green will be maintained by the HOA, main uh, mode and manicure on a weekly basis. So the basin will be attractive and mowed at all times. Okay, the, 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 the water table in that area is, is really pretty high. So if you see it's going to be a dry basin, uh, it probably will not be dry simply because of, of the water table in that area, which is relatively high. What part of the building do we actually go in and do soil samples and we do cores and the engineers use that data, data in the design of the basin. So there are issues like that. That means that the, the basin will you know, be wider and less depth depending on the level of that water table. Um, so that's all part of the engineering. Yeah. Cool. Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Gray. Thank Just you. as we close out the public hearing portion, um, really quick, as it relates to the zoning change, um, I just if we could just get a show of hands and maybe if uh, Sally, if you can uh, give a tally about um, if people are in favor of the zoning change from R2 to PUD um, or if they are in get against. And as I stated, when we start our actual council session, there will be a, a point in which you can make uh, comments from the public. You can go to the podium and then you can ask any question um, as, that you have, not just about this particular development, but any question for any concerns that you have in Forest Park. And we, uh, we allot for that at every council session. We always have that on the agenda. But for, as a show of hands, if people can um, say if they are in favor of the uh, zone change from R2 to RPUD, we can just see those hands really quick. <laughs> All right, and then uh, if you
you can just give a show of hands if you are in, against that particular zone change. And please keep them up to, uh, while we tally that up. And um, we will conclude, at this point, we will conclude the public hearing. But as we're going to roll right into our council work session, I mean, our actual council meeting. And when we get to the comments from the public, uh, then you can still go to the podium and state your name, address, and ask any question of council or the developers. So moving on. Really quick, if anyone does need to leave, though, feel free at any moment to just stand up and, and go out. But we're going to go ahead and start council, the council meeting now. So 